On the other hand, can Canada act as a lifeline for whale capitalism? On the contrary, already the, the, the drop in purchasing power in the US, which is a fact of the American consumer, which is the main locomotive with an investment in China itself, has already undermined the possibility of China acting as a, as a, as a lifeline for world capitalism itself. And therefore, the development of China, rather than acting as a lifeline, can act to actually provoke, be the impetus for the new phase of the crisis of world capitalism itself. Not least, by the way, is the huge geopolitical ramifications of what is taking place at the present time. Remember, it's only a matter of years. Going back to Bush coming to power eight years ago, and particularly after September the 11th, that the idea was put forward that the US was the new master of the universe, that its colossal military power would mean that we'd be able to exercise a sway over this planet that would be measured in decades, if not of centuries. That has been smashed. The knees neocons illusions have been smashed in the sands of Iraq and soon, by the way, in the mountains of Afghanistan. You, the, the US, as a matter of fact, is the new Rome. It is the new empire. But not in the sense that the neocons mean. It's in the, the empire of Rome in its period of decline. And if you examine the Roman Empire, I'm not going to go into history here. It maintained its military prowess. It also maintained a certain domination of its colonies, if you like, long after the, the economic foundations of Rome had begun to rot away with the replacement of the free peasantry with the uh, slave labor and all of that that meant in terms of them having to conquer more and more territory. But the military prowess of Rome was maintained for this period, really for centuries. That's not going to be possible as far as American imperialism is concerned. They won't be allowed the same latitude as a matter of fact in terms of time span. China and Asia, and in particular China, is rising to challenge the power of US imperialism. All the analogies of former empires, when Britain was challenged by Germany in the, the latter part of the 19th century, and got military parity in 1903, inevitably led to a war. Then we had the rise of the US that challenged British imperialism. And contrary to what some of the commentators say, by the way, Trotsky pointed out there was even a possibility at one stage of a war between Britain and the US. And for factors I can't go into here, that came off the agenda. Therefore, from a diplomatic, from a strategic, from a military point of view even, a rising China will, will challenge the power of US imperialism. Can it come to an outright world war? That is not possible given the balance of terror that now exists. Can it come to an armed conflict? For instance over Taiwan? Yes, that's a real possibility. And not just between China and the US by the way, but also between lesser powers, regional wars, the clashes in Kenya are a foretaste of the barbarism the horror without end that can exist on the basis of capitalism. A war not only for oil, as we've seen in Iraq, but a war for other resources such as water, a most valuable resource in the world facing, facing uh, the problems of the environment at the present time. But the other aspect that is crucial for this discussion, and is also vital <coughs> in what we discuss on Britain, is this crisis this economic crisis, before it has struck with its full venom, has had a powerful effect in changing ideology. The process, at least, of ideology. And after all, even now in the universities, amongst the intellectuals, apart from a thin layer, they refer to this as the post-ideological age. What they mean by that is the class struggle has been conjured away. These developments in world capitalism the intervention in the U.S. disguised though it is, but above all, the measures taken in relation to Northern Rock, Northern Rep, Northern Croc, call it what you may, in relation to the Labour government, New Labour stepping in and nationalising, despite all its, its wishes, a, a bank in Britain has profound consequences. After all, it's rumoured that Fidel Castro 
said before he resigned, he said, look, new Labour has nationalised the bank, my job has been done, I'm resigning as the president of the bank. <laughs> if you believe that, you believe that they're pigs flat. But it's a world event. It's not just a British event. And it's not because Britain is now a secondary power. Now nationalisation has been carried through by an agency, New Labour, that paradoxically and ironically was built on the ashes of destroying the idea of New Labour. Could you have a greater demonstration of the beginning of the turnaround of consciousness at the present time? Of course, it's temporary. It's done in a manner to discredit nationalisation. Celebrated through redundancies, all of that comrades will go into in the session on Britain. But it's not just Britain. The Fed has intervened, as I pointed out, this week. For instance, in the federal home banks, there's been an intervention in this, this, this institution that goes back to the 1930s called Fannie Mae and so on. And last but not least, China, which is a hybrid in our opinion. It's an issue of discussion in the CWI. The Chinese regime, faced with the social consequences of millions in the case of China, being thrown out on the stones, can very easily reverse the process of privatisation and go into the reverse in the next period. Any number of factors in China could trigger an upheaval. For instance, inflation, which is a world phenomenon, particularly in food, with the rise in wheat prices, the rise in rice prices, enormous lowering of fruit in Britain and so on. But that's not the picture for people in the neo-colonial world who rely on wheat and who rely on rice, and there have been riots in Mexico, in many other parts of the world because of the colossal rise in prices in this period. In fact, food prices in this field have increased uh, exponentially and are at a record level. The real problem, however, for world capitalism is not inflation, but is deflation, and particularly as the economic crisis develops. The US's economic woes, however, are compounded by the geopolitical problems, particularly the catastrophe in Iran. And despite the Serbs and the claims for the success of the Serbs, it seems that even Mukta al Sadra has been praised by Petraeus, the plenipotentiary, military, military plenipotentiary of the Bush regime in, in, in relation to uh, the developments that are taking place. The reality on the ground is Iraq is more divided than ever. As a matter of fact, it's Northern Ireland writ large. The US at the moment has got a certain appearance of success. Not in the rate, the rate of killing, by the way. Yes, the rate of killing of US troops has gone down because they're not doing the fighting now. The US has armed the ex-Al-Qaeda Sunni forces to do their fighting for them and, and, and conversely, as a matter of fact, leaning on the Shias as well. This has not cancelled the underlying conflict which is there, which is an incipient civil war that will break out once US imperialism is forced from direct domination in Iraq at the present time. This was clearly a war for oil. There's been material revealed in the last couple of weeks, as a matter of fact, which points the kind of naked, cold-hearted calculation of the strategists of US imperialism, where they said, well, the hidden reserves of Iraq, colossal reserves, some of them the greatest in the world, came to about $12 trillion. The cost of the war on their slide wheel, not in humanitarian terms, not in terms of the suffering of the peoples of Iraq, but in terms of the economic benefits for their system. If they, if they fought a war and it cost one trillion dollars, if they waded through the blood of the Iraqi masses and others, what did that mean? It would give them the economic potential to smash OPEC. It might bring down the Iranian regime. It might even bring down the bragging Hugo Chavez as he bestrides Latin America and the neo-colonial world as, as a whole. That's the calculation, or partly, of the intervention of U.S. imperialism in Iraq. 